welcome to the set of lectures on programming skills using C. I have been teaching this subject for the last 20 to 25 years at St. Elvis's College, Mangalore. So many students come after doing the undergraduate programs in computer science like BCA, BS computer science. And invariably, whenever I ask them to write a short four lines program, say like uh, to find the average of some numbers in an array, they are not able to write. Even those students who come with very good marks, high percentage, are not able to do that. I have designed during the last 20 years a very good method of teaching skills in programming. Unfortunately, most of the time our students memorize programs and then uh, uh, answer the examinations. But it is no use memorizing programs. We need to learn the skills of analysis of given problems. And this is to be done using flow charting and pseudocode. I welcome you therefore to this program, uh, these set of uh, lectures which I am going to give on skills in programming. One thing which is very important is this, that during the lecture I will be asking you to pause the video and during that pause you are supposed to do some exercise, workout, say write flowchart, write uh, pseudocode and then C program. That has to be done. Then only real learning can take place. It is no use just going through the whole video and running through the video and learning. You cannot learn. You have to learn as and when I give this lecture. So please, whenever I ask you to pause the video, you do pause the video, work on the problem is given and come back because I will be solving the same problem. Then you will know what you have done, whether you have done it correctly. So what is the learning? What are the learning objectives of this lecture? In this lecture, you will you, uh, learn to use the pseudocode and flow charting to analyze the problems. You will learn to use two sets of operators and three statements. Write assignment statements for some mathematical expressions. Write input and output statements. Use three simple flow charting symbols to create flow charts with pseudocode and ultimately learn to write flow charting with pseudocode for solving problems. So these are the things you will go through in this lecture. We are humans and we can interact with each other with languages. If I don't know the language of the other person, I need to learn that language. Then only I am able to communicate with the person. And what are languages? Languages are a collection of sounds. And each sound represents different words. And these words may be nouns and pronouns and verbs and adjectives and adverbs and conjunctions, etc. Various types of words are there. And to create a sentence, we need to have all these words. Similarly, our computers also understand various computer languages. In the past, we used to use BASIC, COBOL, FORTRAN, and C, C++, Visual Basic, Python, R, and so many languages are there. And these computers can understand those languages, provided we are able to instruct the computer in these particular languages. And that is our task before us. And to do that, first of all, we have to understand how a sentence in a language is constructed. Consider, for example, in English. In English, we have every sentence has a subject and a predicate. Subject could be a noun or a pronoun and the predicate always contains a verb and then followed by noun or some other uh, words. So this is the what is called the syntax of a sentence. And similarly, in computers also, we need a similar structure is there. And to therefore analyze problems, we start with what is called pseudocode. It is a neutral code. It does not work on any computer. But it helps us to analyze a given problem 
and arrive at a solution to the problem using some operators and statements. So let us try to understand what are these operators and what are these statements. As I said, pseudocode is a combination of operators. And what are these operators? Operators are nothing but verbs of my computer language. And statements are a combination of these operators and some other variables, etc. So let us try to understand, therefore, what operators are. First of all, we have arithmetic operators. Arithmetic operators, as you know, are used for doing a lot of arithmetic, mathematical uh, equations. And we have here symbols plus minus into. In when we work mathematics, we don't use, but in computers we use this symbol into divided by a modulus operator. We will come use that modulus operator maybe in the third lecture. Modulus operator uh, is suppose I want to use for example four modulus two. What is the answer? It is going to be zero. That means there is no remainder, zero remainder. Or 5 modulus 2 will give you 1. Therefore, that is the uh, uh, modulus operator which we are going to use. The second set of operators is uh, assignment operator. It is represented by a back arrow symbol. Back arrow symbol. We will be using it in pseudocode. And we come to statements. Now, using these operators, we shall uh, have three statements. And first of the statements is assignment statement. Assignment statements is assigning a value to a variable using our operator. That is assignment operator. This becomes an assignment statement. For example, here we've got 20. I want to assign 20 to A. So I will write it like this. A arrow back arrow 20. That means 20 is assigned to A. Or here I want to find the sum of A and B and put it into C. So C assignment operator A plus B. So this becomes the second assignment statement. And as you see, on the left hand side of an assignment statement, there is only one variable. On the right hand side, you could have one or any number of variables or a complicated equation could be there. And that's uh, uh, result of that complication, complicated uh, equation can be assigned to a variable on the right hand side. And that is assignment statement. Next, what we are going to do is we are going to write quite a lot of assignment statements in pseudocode. With that, we come to the output statements. Yeah, we do quite a lot of mathematics and work out the problems and the results are the results will be there in the computer. We need that those uh, that result to be displayed on the screen. How do we do that? For that we need the output statement that is print within brackets variable. So print is the uh, verb here print I'm telling you is print and variable this is what you call our noun which contains the value for example if I say print a so since you have assigned 20 to a it will print 20 for example here print a and b suppose a contains 20 and b contains 30 it will uh, print 20 and 30 or here print sum of A and B equal to, that is the inverted comma, that will be printed as such. It is not going to be changed. Comma C, C is the sum of A and B. If A is 20 and B is 30, it is the C is going to contain 50 and 50 will be printed. That is the output statement. And with that, we come to the last of the statements. It is called the input statements. These numbers for in A and B have to be typed. It has to receive these numbers. How does it do? Through the keyboard of my computer. I can enter these numbers and when I enter these numbers, they go into those variables. For example, the structure, the syntax is input variable within brackets. Please remember, always have that bracket. Input variable. That means, for example, input A comma B. Computer is going to wait for me to input two numbers, A and B. Suppose I enter 10, it will go into A. 20, it will go into B. So this is how we input numbers or alphanumeric data into various variables. So these are the two sets of operators. Operators, as I said, these are the verbs of my computer language. 
to verbs or by computer language that tells us what to do etc and these are the statements assignment statement based on these uh, operators and output statement and input statement my dear friends now i have got a, i have got six uh, uh, problems here you are supposed to write uh, uh, pseudo code for these mathematical expressions so i request you to pause this video for some time and then you write the corresponding uh, pseudo code statements for each of these and we will come back to you i hope you have already written and let us uh, check and see because i have seen in spite of doing 3 years of computer science many uh, students are not able to write simple assignment statements they forget the operators etc so let us the first one is f is equal to ma that is what we say f is equal to ma in other words what it means is multiply m the mass with acceleration and find out the force and put uh, assign it to f so this is the statement uh, assignment statement m into a operator is there and this is assignment operator and put that value into f here we have got area of a rectangle is this is the formula length into breadth how are we going to so length into breadth into breadth and then multiply that and assign the value to area rectangle this is the variable which stores the area of that rectangle third is area of a circle we know we have learned this formula in high school pi r squared so we have to write now assignment statement invariably here also many people many students make mistake and they simply write pi computer does not understand pi so we have to give the value of pi either you write 3.14159 or simple thing is 22.0 divided by 7.0 that is 5 into r into r r squared and assign that value to a variable called area circle this is area of a circle then area of a triangle half bh again half 1 divided by 2 into b into h and assign it to the variable called area triangle and with that we come to the last of these uh, uh, assignment statements there's conversion of uh, temperature in centigrade to fahrenheit 9 by c 5c it plus 32 therefore it has to be 9.0 divided by 5.0 into c plus 32 and assign that value using assignment operator to f so these are some of the assignment uh, of statements which i am very sure you have written and you have been successful with that we go to the next part of our understanding learning uh, programming flow charting is very essential initially you have to use flow chart to analyze problems later once you are accomplished you did not uh, write the flow chart or in case of a very complicated to a problem it is always uh, helpful to write the flow chart and arrive at a very good solution now flow charting is pictorial representation of our programs a problem and we start always with this symbol start and end symbol we start every flow chart with this symbol and it ends also with that symbol here you have got a rectangle which is used for declaration of variables and for the processing of uh, some equations etc and this is uh, this symbol is used and the statement will come inside this for input and output statements so only three we will deal at the moment with three flow charting symbols and use them in our study of uh, uh, program so we will have a demo exercise so the, the, the demo is to draw flow chart with pseudo code to input two numbers and find the sum of those two numbers very simple we have to input two numbers how shall we proceed so we start with the simple start and then we declare variables variable a comma b comma c we need three variables because we have to find the sum of two variables and put it in the next variable and here what we do next is input a comma b this is our input statement we are inputting the value for a and value for b we have to input that and after that we find the sum of a and b and put it in c this is the next assignment statement and after that there is an output statement print sum of a and b equal to c c contains the sum of a and b and we print that and with that we come to the end of this flow chart which is flow chart along with pseudo code and uh, this is complete uh, flow chart for uh, 
the find the sum of two numbers with that we will write now the next flow chart uh, again you uh, you pause the video for some time you write the flow chart for this problem that is flow chart with pseudo code to find the area of a circle with radius r and as you know we input a variable or value is only r and then you have to find the area using pi r squared and then display the area kindly do that as you see now we have start then we declare two variables area circle and r these are the two variables we need we input the value of r then we find we calculate the area of a circle pi r squared pi is 22 divided by 7 r squared and then we print the uh, value of uh, the area of that circle and with that we come to the end of our uh, flow chart simple but it summarizes whatever we have to do in uh, solving this problem later we will be taking this flow chart and converting that into c program or c plus program or python program any program so that is how we have to do you write again uh, next problem i would like you to pause this video for some time write the flow chart with pseudo code again start we have f is equal to 9 by 5 c plus 30 there are two variables f and c so we declared these two variables f and c and we have to input what do we input we input uh, temperature in centigrade because we want to convert that into fahrenheit therefore input c the value of c you enter 0 or 100 etc and once you have inputted then you calculate the, uh, the value of f using this formula formula is given we have converted that into uh, assignment statement 9 by 5 into c plus 32 and with that you display now the temperature in f so f it will display suppose uh, the value of c is 0 automatically all this goes then only 32 is going to display 32 so then we come to the end of our flow chart so this is the second flow chart you have written and I'm, I'm sure you have written it perfectly correctly. With that, we you have to now work out some more problems. I have given five more problems. Uh, immediately what you do is take first two uh, problems and then uh, write flow chart for these two problems. First is enter five numbers and find the total and average of those numbers. Mathematically, we represent that sigma xi by n. Sigma means sum, sum. Find the sum of n numbers, x1 plus x2 plus x3, etc. Five numbers. And then divide by n, that becomes average or mean of those five numbers. Here, enter five numbers and calculate the average of squares of numbers. So, sigma xi squared by n. What does it mean? That means x1 into x1 plus x2 into x2, etc. And divide by n, that becomes the average of the squares of numbers. Pause the video and write flow charts for these two problems. I am very sure you have written. Now you compare your flow chart with the flow chart I have given here. So we start and then we declare five variables x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. We want one more sum and one more variable average. And we input only these five numbers. Some students write comma, sum, etc. No use because we are going to find the sum of those five numbers. Therefore, input only five numbers 1, 2, x1, x2, up to x5. And once you have done that, you find the sum. Sum will add x1 plus x2 plus x3, x4, x5, etc. You find the sum of those numbers. And average is sum divided by 5 because there are 5 numbers. So sum divided by 5. And you display, therefore, the sum and the average of these uh, 5 numbers. This is the flow chart. I am very sure most of you have a written correct flow chart. Now we go to the next problem. Here you have got enter five numbers and calculate the average of squares of those five numbers. That is sigma xi squared divided by n. We are going to use both these in the next problem where we are going to find out 
the standard deviation of five numbers. So therefore, understanding these two problems is very important. Then it becomes very easy to work out the next problem, which we will be doing during the next session. As you see here, start five numbers and you have got sum x square. So also, please remember, when you give the names of these variables, let them be representative of what you are doing. So they, they, earlier it was sum x, sum of x elements. Now sum x square, that means the sum of squares of x and average. And again, as we have done in the earlier case, input only five numbers. Now you find out the sum of squares, x1 into x1 plus x2 into x2, like that x into x2, x5 into x5. That is the sum of squares of these numbers. Now next step is to find out the average. So I've got sum x square is there, divided by five, I get the average of those numbers. And you display those sum x squared, the sum of those squares of those numbers and average of those numbers. With that, we have written the next flow chart with pseudocode to find the sum of squares of uh, some five numbers and with that we come to a few more problems which I would like you to work out this is a assignment before you start the next uh, session uh, next lecture on uh, uh, programming skills first problem is given the length of three sides of a triangle calculate the area of the triangle using the formula given below area is equal to square root of s into s minus a into s minus b and s minus where s is equal to a plus b plus c divided by 3 so simple problem you will have to do that and for the square root you use sqrt and within brackets you put this formula so that is how we are going to do and the second is calculate the distances traveled by a vehicle in time t with initial velocity u and acceleration a and final velocity uh, yeah. uh, so u t and uh, yeah only two so s is equal to u t plus half a t squared t is the time taken therefore u into t plus half a into t squared you have to input therefore u and t and a three have to three values have to be inputted and then you do the calculation next is calculate the area not covered you have got a rectangle here you have got a, a triangle here you have to find out this area that means you have to first find out the area of the rectangle whose sides are l into b l is length b is breadth and you have to find the area of the triangle you you have given you half bh as the uh, formula you find out now what should be the value for the area of this triangle therefore then you deduct the area of triangle from the area of uh, the rectangle then you get the uh, results and calculate the volume of a cylinder with the circular base circular base with radius r and height h so you have to use a little imagination and all this is uh, uh, you have learned in your high school and uh, use the, whatever you know and then come out uh, write pseudocode um, flowchart with pseudocode so solve these problems so thank you we will meet you for the next lecture